Okay. Game number 608. This one is called String Tyrant. So if you have uh, issues with dolls, um, this might be uh, not be the right game for you to watch. But if you have issues with doll and you enjoy the issues, then this is the right game to, <laughs> to watch. Um, I read some reviews of it and they say that it... Um, I, I believe they were talking about this game. I read a bunch of reviews of all the games by this dev. But I think this one is the one they were talking about where it's about... Um, it has a it has a portrayal of uh, the 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 tra trans woman's angst about being pretty and the sacrifices that come with it sometimes. Anyway, let's let's look into it and see see what it's about. Let's go in and let's launch the game. Okay, looks pretty creepy. I think it looks pretty creepy. But also looks fantastic. Um, options. Oh, the, res the resolution is a little flat. That's why it's... Um, can I make it 1920 by 1080? Should I risk it? Can I apply that? Okay, seems like it worked. All right, let's try a new game. Minecafana said I had a huge horror binge a while back, and this movie called, like, The Boy, it was about a surrogate doll this elderly couple kept. <laughs> Freaked me out. Yeah, different dolls have different kinds of... Let's do the tutorial. Different kinds of effects. Okay. Welcome to String Tyrant. This tutorial will teach you the basics of playing the game. To begin, there's a note on the ground near you. Type look note to read it. You can also use the locality window in the bottom right. Um... Use the local you want to click the rightmost icon to show nearby objects. This thing. Uh, and then the note. You can read it from the pop-up menu. Look. Oh, okay. Look note. You can look at objects to get descriptions of them. You can also look at nearby people or just look by itself to see the nearby objects in the room. Uh, oh, right. You can just type. Where do I type? Uh, when you enter a room, you'll see a list of nearby objects and entities. You can look to repeat that description. The eye indicator on your navigation compass will perform the look command as well. Uh, I this thing? Yeah. Okay. Next, let's move around. You can type N or move north to move north. You can use the locality window or the navigation compass to do this as well. Okay. Um... So where do I type? Oh, there, there we go. Um, just look. There's nothing interesting about this room. So we can, you can see a note. Look, note. Okay, so it does the same thing. Um, can you do a read note is the same as the look. Um, okay, so we got equipment, a heavy stick. And we have inventory, entities, objects, and note. Huh. Okay. Um, let's go. Arriving at exterior C, you can see a note. West arriving at exterior west. Uh, exterior east. 
Territorial Hall South. Oh, there's another note. Let's read this. Oh, there was two notes. Interesting. Let's look at this. Your north is a door. Doors block line of sight, but can be opened by either moving through them or using the open door end command. You can close doors with close or close S, depending on the direction. Can be used to see nearby doors. Um, enemies can't see through doors, and you can't see them. But you can, however, hear enemies up to two tiles away. Be careful about moving through a door without opening it, unless you're feeling brave. For now, move through the door, get in the habit of closing doors behind you. All right. Okay, cool. Uh, you can't do that. You can... Okay. So, close south. Ah, there we go. And let's look at this note. To the west, you find a friend, Jessie, behind the door. You can use Talk Jessie to speak to her. Ah. To the west, Talk Jessie. Um, okay. For now, she will just remain in that room. In that game, friendly characters may follow you around or have important things to talk about. Once you've met Jessie, follow the hallway to the north. Okay. Open uh, west. And then, um, you found Jesse. You should talk Jesse with her, okay? Huh. Uh, hey, Mary. Seems you're getting the tutorial pretty well. Good job. Thanks, Jesse. Okay. Um, then, yeah, uh, east. Right. Uh, north. Wait, what? there's something else there. Uh, what is this? Uh, Microphone says, okay, heading to sleep early tonight. Much love. Thank you for hanging on, Microphone, and thank you for coming in with the raid and for all your... Thank you for sharing all your jokes. It's much appreciated. <laughs> okay, you can click on move too. That's pretty cool. I'll talk to you another time. To the east, you can see an enemy. You can identify enemies by the orange glow around their indicators, okay? This enemy will stay still for tutorial purposes. In the real game, enemies can see as far as you can and will chase you if they see you. Fighting enemies is dangerous and should be avoided whenever possible. You have limited options for recovering your health, but enemies will respawn. Avoid this enemy. Use the side passage to go around her. Don't step in the same tile as her. Okay. Oops. Uh, side passages, like these ones. Ah. And there's another note and a potion. Okay. So let's see. Let's do the note first. There's a health potion here. Try using take health potion to take it with you. You can pick up items like this, including weapons and armor. If you find those, you can equip them. You can find your items in the low quality window listing. Health potions will restore your hearts to full. In combat, you can drink them by clicking the health potion icon. Okay. Uh, take. And then uh, we go there. Hey, there's stuff here. Evade hall. Uh, evade hall. Uh, let's close west. And what's this? You can see a fire poker. Oh, there's a, another note here. Uh, look, note. Ahead of you is a real enemy. There's no way around her, so you'll have to fight. There's a weapon on the ground. Equip it to improve your chances. In combat, you'll need to create attacks or defenses using a card deck. The enemy is easy and will not fight back very much. Click on cards to play them. Element cards increase damage, defense, action cards uh, change whether you're attacking or defending. Uh, and or and and off cards let you play additional element cards. Cards you cannot play are grayed out. Using more of the same element or an attack increases the damage dealt, so pick like elements when you can. Elements have other special effects as well. 
Click the draw button to the bottom right to draw additional cards into your hand. Enemies attack after you've spent a certain amount of time units. Each action you do costs time units. When attacked, you lose heart chips. Your hearts show your health, and if they run out, you lose. If you use defend cards, you'll create shields that stop damage. They appear above your health bar. Balance your offense and defense. Also, you have an ace card in the bottom left. It is more powerful than normal cards. Reappears after a while. Use it early and often. Lastly, if you run out of cards, you will need to shuffle your deck. This consumes a lot of time units. Try to use your cards wisely and spend as little time shuffling as possible. Okay. Um, let's pick up this fire poker. Uh, take... Equip. Yeah, it has a bit of that uh, Chains of Memories feel to it. All right. Combat. The doll smiles at you. You see Melanie here. The doll smiles at you. Her green is icy and she bears down on you. Prepare for a fight. Okay. Um, shocking, grinding, parry, thundering... And Perry Crush. Okay, so we are creating a sentence, I think. Um, what is this? Batter? All right, so these are the hearts. These are the cards left, I'm guessing. Okay, so these are like... Hmm, I see. Shocking. Crush. Could do a Shocking Crush. Or a batter um shocking crush plus three draws i got plus three draws um so let's draw one freezing and end okay Okay, I should do a parry. Uh, I should do a parry. Is that the... Hmm. I can do parry and parry? No, I can't do... No, no, no more. Parry. Yeah. Okay, now act. Because okay, so I got two shields now. Hmm. And do I get a draw? No. Um, I can do another parry, or is this, oh, it's an act, okay. Um, okay, so that was an attack. Oh, that was, oh, that was a weapon that, that I had. Oh, that was the ace card, okay. Um, all right, so we can do, we can do, we could do freezing parry. Ah, it's got an element to it now. Those two shields have elements to it. Cool. Um, and draw some. Chilling. Throw. We could do chilling and thundering throw. Chilling and thundering throw. What is this thing? Okay, so that was good. We got... Yeah, I had to play and. Okay, so I could do an erupting throw. Uh, I could do an erupting throw. Damage four. All right, that was good. Huh, the doll smiles at you. Okay, we did that. Um... Okay, let's read the note. Made it this far. You've already, you're ready for whatever string tyrant will throw at you. Stay quiet, avoid enemies, pick up items, and read whatever information you can find. And be on the lookout for devilish traps. You can save the game with the save command when at fountain in the normal game. There's one in the main hall at the start of the game, so keep your eyes out. You can also edit the size of your deck with the deck command. You may find additional cards to tip the scales in your favor. To experiment further with the combat mechanics, proceed to the north. To learn about the stealth mechanics, proceed to the south.
Uh, stealth is probably a good idea to learn about. Okay, let's go south. Hi, Shelly. It's news microphone hole is too big for the mic stand, but we cam fits perfectly. Ah, okay. The microphone doesn't fit, but the cam camera does. The door to the west is locked with a club key to open it and try to open it and a symbol will appear to show that it's locked. There is a spade key somewhere in the area to the south. There's also an enemy patrolling the area. If you're caught, you will be warped back here. Hide in the side rooms and shut the door. You can hear the enemy moving in the hallway. Watch for its sound indicator. Move when it's far away and if you get spotted, run. There's a spade key locked uh, door to the south end of this area. Reach it with the key and and go through it. Okay. There's a lot of information. Ah, you can zoom in and out. There's an enemy there. Oh, crap. Um, ah, so that's the sound. How do you wait? Is that wait? Yeah. Okay, so the enemy went that way. Okay. Close the north. Go left. Oh, that's the spade. Okay. Okay, so, but where do we... What is that? That's the spade, right? Okay. Uh, we have... Oh, that's the club, huh? Okay. 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 Oh. God will move you back a bit. Hide inside rooms and close the door. You can close doors with the yeah, yeah. Um. You can see the sound they make on the map. Figure out the patrol and move when the enemy is far away. Okay. Alright, so it should be here now. So I should be able to go in. Now, one of these doors must have the club key. Or the spade key. Okay, the enemy's coming there. Close north. Um, okay. Oh, it was standing right outside. Um, okay, so let's wait a bit. There's no sound in this game, is there? Oh, well, that sucks. Okay, I'm gonna switch on the music for now. Um. Drone says, if I take my eyes out, I can't see. What? Catching up on a lot of things. Okay, maybe these doors have. Ah, there's the key. The spade key. Uh, I take it. Oh. Let's open. Um, do I need to use it? 
Nope. It. Okay. Now close. East. Okay. And now we have a note and a club key. Let's take the club key and then read the note. Good work. You found the key and evaded the enemy. You'll need to do that a lot more in the game proper. You can take the shortcut back to the start if you like to try out the combat test of the north types restart to return to the main menu all right so i think we are done with the tutorial wow we're outside okay um there we go now why isn't there music there's supposed to be music Maybe during the game there'll be music. I'm gonna shut down the stream music so we can check. Uh, start game. I don't hear any music. Okay, so your name is Mary. You are a 16 year old girl from Coventry, West Midlands, England. Uh, that sounds ominous. Uh, this is Jessie, your best friend, even if she's from Sheffield. Oh, that thing that they have. Um, you've been inseparable since you met at the age of eight. This is Lauren, your little brother. You're walking him home after school to make sure nobody picks on him. So that's a tendency. Look at all the cuts. Uh, it's a chilly, overcast day, as you usually do. You're taking a long, meandering path home. You're cutting through the woods, killing time, and enjoying the part of the day that isn't school. I should have had an ominous, um, music track for this game, but I didn't know that the music would be off, so... You always hop across the brook that runs through the forest near here. You take your time hopping across the stones so your shoes don't get wet. Lauren usually misses and splashes um, himself. This time is no exception. You and Jesse help him up, chuckling at him. He takes it with good humor. You continue along the path. The sky is darkening with threats of rain. You should probably hurry home. Wait. There's the brook. The brook you just crossed. You turn around. Jesse is as confused as you. Did you get lost? Did you go the wrong way? You reorient yourself, changing, change directions, and resume the course for home. There's the brook, again. There's a box sitting in the middle of the brook, resting on a stone. It was not there before. I love how creepy this is. <laughs> Huh. You walk over to check it. There's a picture of some sort of red devil creature on it. The box has text on it. Miss Wilde's magic deck. Miss Wilde? A cartoon imp? That's Miss Wilde. Haven't you heard of her? No. Miss Wilde's Wild Adventure is the best show on TV. She travels around the land, getting into wacky adventures and using her magic card deck to set right the wrongs in the world. Sounds like the magic school was. I didn't know she had merchandise. You pick up the box, you think someone dropped it? A note falls out of the box. It reads, it has to be fair, good luck. We're gonna be late and it's gonna be gonna rain any second. Open the box later. Oh, come on, look inside. You look inside, it's a collection of cards with different suits, fire, water, sword, shield. You idly tap a fire card. You'd swear it feels warm for a second. The sky opens up, rain pours onto you, chilling you to the bone. It's frigid, a kind of cold you've not felt in the coldest winter. Later, let's go. The three of you start running as the wind picks up. You run in the direction you think is the right way. And there's the brook again, only this time there's someone standing there.
They're wearing a heavy brown trench coat covering their face and body. Every instinct in your body tells you to not call out, to not alert them to your presence. They turn to face you, a distant burst of lightning, followed by the crack of thunder a few seconds later. It illuminates the brook. You see a glint. Holy sh... <laughs> That's creepy. A white mask, a vicious intent. Something is deeply wrong. Your feet are moving before you've even figured out what is happening. You grab Lauren and run. The three of you run as quickly as you can without time for a word to pass between you into the woods. You think you see a house in the distance. You're not sure who lives there and it doesn't matter at all. You need to call the police, call for help. And then the stranger is in front of you. Between you and the house, the three of you stop dead in your tracks. You take the front. Alright. And then the stranger is in front of you, between you and the house. The three of you stop dead in your tracks. You take the front. The stranger advances on you. You try to catch sight of their face, but the mask is dark beneath the covers, uh, beneath and covers her completely. It doesn't matter. You shout at Lauren to run for the house. With a shove, you send Jesse after him. The stranger lunges. You dart behind a tree, your heart, heart pounding through your chest. The stranger misses, recovers, and tries to grab you again. Grabbing a nearby stick, you swing it at the stranger. The stick roars like an open flame as it slices the air. It connects and they double over. Adrenaline surges. You run. As fast as your legs will carry you, you run towards the house. Your breath gives out. You're near the front door. The rain pounds. Whoever was in the woods did not follow you. Maybe you lost them. Maybe they're still watching and waiting. You look around briefly. No sign of Jesse or Lauren. You hope they're in the house. You hope that whoever lives there can help. Something about this place is strange, off, wrong. You need to find your brother and your friend before you do anything else. Time to get going. I love that the, the gameplay mechanics... Holy sh... The gameplay mechanics has um, in, was integrated into the lore. I find it sad when there's actually meant to be music in the game, but they kind of leave it out. Not intentionally. I think it's my system that can't take it. No, it's not there. It's, it's... Yeah, the music's not there. Whoever was in the woods did not follow you. Maybe you lost them. Maybe they're still watching and waiting. Look around briefly. No sign of Jesse or Lauren. You hope they're in the house. You hope that whoever lives here can help. Something about this place is strange, off, wrong. You need to find your brother and your friend before you do anything else. Okay. Oh, I read that already. You know, I really like this kind of game where... You can just add as much text as you want to to describe what's going on. And it, it, it's good storytelling. Okay. Overgrown path. There's nothing interesting. Oh, there's something there. An imp imposing multi-story manor is to your north. There are footprints here made recently going east. I see. Okay. Uh, you can see a blue storybook. A storybook titled The Tragic Tale of Max Korber, about the titular character finding a strange mansion in the mountains. 
Inside Cover says Korber is famous, but you've never heard of him. No author is listed. Huh. Is it a diary? The Tragic Tale of Max Korber. The story has three chapters. Read a chapter with Read Blue Storybook 1, 2, or 3. Okay. Read Blue Storybook 1. This is the story of Max Korber. Max was a mountain climber, the finest in the land. There was no peak he could not brave. He climbed the tallest mountain and the smallest mountain. The steepest cliff posed no challenge to him. Max loved to climb. One day, Max was hiking in the mountains of Scotland. There were many tough cliffs to conquer and Max defeated them one by one. His planned route contained no less than seven, but Max was up for a challenge. When Max climbed the fifth cliff, he saw something odd in the distance, a lonely manor estate tucked into the hills, surrounded by boulders and steep cliffs. It seemed impossible. How could a building be built in such a mountainous terrain? Who would live here? Max needed to know, so he made his way to the manor. When Max stood before it, he felt a chill blow through his jacket. Max was tough, prepared for the cold, and accustomed to hardship. But there was something about this place which scared even him. Max knocked on the door, and to his surprise, he was, was almost immediately answered. A lady stood before him, dressed in a smock stained with paints. She ushered him in and called for her servants to prepare for their guest. Max was taken aback but could not turn down their hospitality. The servants took his coat and offered to prepare a bath. They were all very polite but somewhat odd. Max thought they, that they seemed oddly stiff and cold, but he was sure his eyes were playing tricks on him. The daylight was fading and the shadows grew long. He was tired. He ate well that night and slept soundly in the room made for him. When he awoke, he looked around in shock. The manor lay in total disrepair. The walls had holes in them, cobwebs infested every corner, and there was no sign of the polite people who had taken care of him the night before. Puzzled, Max searched the manor. He searched high and low, but found nary a clue. The place was abandoned. He fetched his coat, still near the entrance hall, and immaculate compared to the dismal building. As he prepared to leave, he stepped outside and looked down. Clouds, clouds as far down as he could see. There was no ground beneath him, none beneath the house. It was as though he was on a rock floating in the sky. Huh. Max stumbled backwards into the house again. There was some mistake. This was some dream. As he did, he bumped into something firm. It clutched him in its cold plastic hands. Max tried to scream as he looked into the eyes of the gothic doll girl who held him. Nothing came out. His mouth had turned to plastic. Soon the rest of him followed and Max slumped listlessly in the hands of the doll girl. The creator took the blank doll and dressed it. She made it into a pretty princess. The princess loved adventure. The princess was good, obedient little Dolly. And the princess wrote down her silly dream about the man named Max Korber, just in case her creator wanted to read it. Max Korber was never seen again. The end. Are we gonna take it around? No. Let's, let's just, let's just go. Okay, there are footprints, small footprints going west. And there is, there are footprints here made recently going east. So I am guessing the brother went west. <sighs> okay. So I see the footprints going west. And this is another door here, side entrance. He looks like an enemy now. 
interesting. I see movement. Uh, apparently, there's supposed to be a fountain where I can save right when I start. I didn't see the fountain here. It might be in, inside the... Oh, there's something here. There's a stairway here leading to the darkness below. Okay, so that's going to the basement of some sort. This is a... Uh... I don't know what that was. Okay, so let's go west. Hmm, I have a heavy stick and that's about all I have. Wait, that's an uh, that's a uh, not the footprint person. This is where the footprint goes. Um, okay, what is this? Yeah, I'll have to find a. We're just running in a circle right now. Um, yeah, I guess I can hide in that corner. Lars log, there's a picture of a diamond next to the key. Okay, we can close this door. Okay. Uh, there's something here. There's a plate of uh, scalloped potatoes sitting on the desk here. They've probably been sitting here for a long time, but they don't look rotten. Still better not to touch them. Yeah. Let's get the leather jacket out. A uh, leather jacket used by bikers. Tough, though not very warm. Plus one defense, plus one starting shield. You can equip or unequip it. Let's take it and equip it. Okay, cool. Uh, oh. You found Lauren. You you should talk Lauren with him. Okay, yeah. So, first, let's, let's see what he's seeming like. Your kid brother Lauren is frequently bullied and always comes running to you for help. You made a point of protecting him for years now, but you're not sure you'll be able to in this strange place. Talk to him. Mary, you oh, thank the Lord. I was so scared. Well, don't be. I'm here now. What happened? Where are we? Who are those plastic girls? I don't know. All I know is we're getting out of here. Follow me. Are you sure? It's not safe out here. Stay with me and we'll look for some place less, less dangerous, okay? Okay. Orin Wolf, now follow you. You should find a safe place for him. Okay. Um, is there anything um, else around here? Um, the entrance to the cabin has signs of habitation. Uh, the fireplace has long, uh, cold ashes in it. There are also recent muddy footprints leading south. Okay. The enemy is sitting here. Uh, this door is locked. Dang. What happens if we wait? Okay, it's moving. I think it only makes noise. Uh, it only shows up when it's walking. Okay. Okay, so it, it does go around a circle. So we'll have to assume it went right at this point. We'll wait one more step for it to go one more right. And then we can go out. Yeah, okay. It's gonna show up here, I think, down. Oh, somewhere here. What is this thing? A quiet corpse. A testament. Okay. 
A stone slab with strange glyphs on it, some unknown of some unknown language. As you look at it, the glyphs seem to blur. A moment later, the glyphs unblur and are written in plain English, somehow. My name is Eileen and I welcome you to the afterlife. Or at least that is what I assume this place is, for I am certain I died before I came here. I had been stabbed and was left bleeding to death. I closed my eyes and awoke here, fresh and unharmed. If this is not the afterlife, then where could it be? I was a hunter when I lived, and I find this place populated by people who attack me, die, and then stand again when I defeat them. I made many mistakes. If this is my punishment, so be it. It is tradition among those in my profession to leave messages for those who come later in the hunt. I'll write what I learn. Good luck. It's so interesting. I love that there's so many characters involved. Okay. Yeah, we shouldn't go through that door, but the enemies are around here somewhere. Ah, there. Okay, close. Out. It's just outside. I don't know if they can open doors, but that's... Uh... Okay, so either here or down. Okay, it's open the door, going out. Okay, cool. It left. The music actually matched up with this part. <laughs> with this part. Okay. This is a heart. It reminds me of um, Resident Evil. Ah, there's a crowbar. A fire poker. Probably better than these. A cast iron fire poker. It's sharp and very, very... Uh, and very heavy, increasing physical damage by two. You can equip or unequip it. What about my stick? Big heavy stick increases by one. Okay, so let's equip the fire poker. Okay, so my attack should be higher now. I think there should be a... A save point here somewhere. Archive lobby. Oh, yeah. Okay. Move up. Move here. Close. East. Okay. Now let's wait a bit to see if the monster passes through. Okay, I don't think it does. So let's uh, go up. You can go side through this. Okay, cool. Interesting. Can't go there. Close west. Ah, this one is a spade. That's a spade. 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 Okay, so this whole thing is spade, probably. That's a heart. Okay, so the heart section is up there. I think we need to get out and... There's something here. Uh, save glyph. There it is. Uh, take the save glyph. Look at it. A curious piece of paper allows you to save when you're not near. 
when you're not near a fountain, but it is destroyed in the process. Okay, so it's a, a checkpoint. Okay, so there's an enemy there, so we're gonna go around. I'm playing really carefully, but... All right. I think it's the same one. No, maybe not. Um... Okay. I'm playing very carefully in here, but normally when I play these games I by myself, I'm way less careful. I mean, like, let's see what happens. Um, it's a heart on it. Okay. Hmm. I don't think I should close this door because we had to run through it. Ah, the monster's there. Ooh, that was... Ah. Uh... North, close north. Okay. Um... It's waiting outside. Okay, it went through there. Uh, let's get out. Um, yeah, um, have a good sleep, Jonan. Thank you for coming by. We, we need to get to this side. That's what I'm trying to achieve here. Goes west. Put down. Oh, interesting. There are a few paintings here of people you've never seen before. The guest room was a makeshift workshop. Okay. Uh, go here. Oh. Oh. Wait. Is that Lauren? Uh, no, not Lauren. The, uh, um, Jesse. Sorry. You're arriving in the main hall northwest. This is a place I think we should be safe here for the time being. Um. Hello, ma'am. Do you live here? Oh, God. Oh, my goodness. Did you make a new friend, little one? Oh, but she's a little off, isn't she? Uh, uh, I'm Lauren, and I'm a boy. Who's she talking to? Uh, don't be ridiculous, little one. Pigmelly says with a laugh. We never met this person before. Um... She might be a little loopy, Lauren, but I don't think she's actually dangerous. Just try not to upset her. Oh, we supposedly have met her before, I guess. Uh, my little one talking about your creator as if she's not listening in. Naughty, naughty. Okay. I know this might be tough, but you could s stay here. I'm sure Jessie is someplace nearby, so I could go look for her. Stay with her. Keep your distance and be polite. Okay. I'll be back soon with Jesse. This is a bad idea, but sure. There's a woman here who may want to talk. Okay, let's let's do that talk. Let's do okay, look. Imposing woman, she's smiling at you. There's an insincerity to that smile. Uh talk. Hello, darling. Aren't you adorable? The lady says. My name is Pigmelly. Pleased to meet you. Mary, you reply. She cocks her head to one side. Mary? What a sweet name. Not sure how I got here. Where are we? What is this place? You ask. Ha ha ha. Those are complicated and very silly thoughts, little one. You don't need to have those thoughts. No, not at all. Come again? What are you talking about? No deference, no submission. You're not ready yet, but you will be. I can't wait. Despite looking at you and speaking to you, Pygmalion only seems to be partially aware of your presence. She doesn't seem dangerous, though. Probably the most dangerous creature here. <laughs> okay. Um. Ah, there's a map. Map of the area. Use the look map command to look closely at it, alright? Oh, god. 
That is a... Uh, that is a map. That is like a map map. Okay. So we're not... Uh, we're actually gonna leave him here. This is gonna be a bad idea, but okay. It's what's needed for the story. Um... I'm wondering if Lauren went downstairs. Let's go downstairs. Um, how do you how do you use the downstairs? Look at stairway. No. So we can't go there. Hmm. A bathing room of some sort. A fountain is here, as are towels, soap, perfumes, and the like. You could drink fountain to recover some health, but only up to half of your maximum. And also save your game here. And there's a save glyph. Let's take that too. Um, and, 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 and. Um, oh. Road save file enters. Go saves. Okay. This is a, they designed this engine from scratch. Pretty pretty impressive. All right. So are we going upstairs? Or is there like a is is there like a up and go? Oh, it's up and down. Oh, that's what the stair symbol is. This thing. Okay, so I think maybe we could go here and go down. There we go. Uh, oh, oh, what's this? Prison entry. Okay, so we're in the we're in the we're in the cellar with the, the with the dungeons, basically. Oh, potion. Let's take the potion. Uh, take it. Oh, those are skeletons. Okay, and this is a uh, diamond. Oh. Reminds me of so much of Resident Evil. Alright, let's go. Oh, there is a... Uh... Is that an enemy? Yes, it's an enemy. Um... Close. Uh, east. Okay. They go away if you go into the safe zone. They're afraid of her. Probably. Alright, let's go upstairs. Uh. Okay. There's something here. Uh, fire card. Let's take it. Oh, more story over here. Close east. Huh, dusty old workshop. There's a grinding wheel here. You could sharpen a blunt object to make it usable again. Huh, okay, cool. So that's pretty useful. Blunted scissors, huh? Okay, let's take it. We can sharpen it later. Um, a testament. Let's look at the testament. Look at the floor. Look down. Look west. Look east. There are grooves where the strings do not pass. Not where you find this testament, my friend. No, where the scissors are most helpful. Huh. They will only take you so far. An element of courage is needed in any hunt. Strings. Are they talking about puppet strings? Hmm. How do I sharpen something again? There was a... Um, Dusty Lorsha. There's a grinding wheel here. You could sharpen. Okay. So I could sharpen scissors. Sharpen. Blunted. Scissors. 
Use the grinding wheel to sharpen your blunted scissors. They should be able to cut again. Cool. That's good. Nothing here. Heart. Don't know what that is, but... Oh. There's a red storybook here. Interesting. Close out. Let's read this story. Dahlia and the Clay Soldier. A story in 1940s typewriter font. The pages look like weathered vellum. No author is listed. Dahlia and the Clay Soldier. This story has five chapters. Wow. Okay. Read, read, story, book, one. Dahlia was a dancer. She was in the ballet and traveled all across the world. Dahlia danced for crowds from Europe to Asia to North America. When the war came, Dahlia danced for the boys on the front, free of charge. The boys gawked and hollered. Dahlia took it as a compliment, considering the nature of the war. These silly boys might not make it back. They had to be up front. One of them asked her to go on a date with him before he was put back on the line. Dahlia, flying back to London the next morning with the ballet, had nothing else to do. She agreed. Uh, so this is in uh, Second World War, I think. The boy couldn't have been a day over 18 while Dahlia was in her 20s. He was a polite, quiet boy. He had a southern accent but spoke very eloquently. He told her he had grown up in the hills, but his mother insisted he go to the big city for school. Dahlia was enraptured. The night came to an end and Dahlia had to take, get back to the house she had been put up in. The boy offered to walk her home. Arm in arm, the two went into the street. As the sun, as the sun set, the lights went out. Nobody wanted to give a target for the bombers. The two stuck out to to the streets and used what little moonlight they could, but eventually they got lost. After much searching on empty roads, they found their way to the house. Standing alone on a hill at the end of a long cobbled road was the house Dali had been staying in. She smiled at the boy and asked if he wanted to come in. He sputtered, said that said he didn't have leave to stay overnight. She put her hand daintily on his chest and he agreed to come anyway. Inside the house was quiet. Dahlia was confused. The layout was different. None of her things were there and the French family who lived there were absent. She called out to them but heard no reply. The boy was eager and Dahlia decided that she had more important things to do. They found the first bedroom they could. She lit a candle, careful to keep it from the windows, and told the boy that she needed to get ready. He waited eagerly on the bed, still in his uniform. She reminded him to get ready too, and he laughed before he took his clothes off. Dahlia went into the adjoining room. She heard a cry, a shout of excitement. She assumed the boy was preparing for his, preparing in his own way. She got ready for the moment and opened the door, prepared to see the boy. She did not see what she expected. The boy had his hands wrapped around a small bottle that had been on the nightstand. In it there was bubbling red liquid. He was holding it with a pained expression on his face, barely visible in the dim light of the candle. Dali expected him to be nervous. Perhaps he had found some wine. She drew nearer to see what that his arms had been covered in something. The something was not, not not the bed she's as she had expected, but a curious thick substance like clay. It seemed to be spreading down his body, covering it. Dahlia reached for it, but the boy slapped her hand away. She brought the candle over to see his face, only to see that his mouth had been covered by the clay. The clay seemed to withdraw as she held the candle close. In shock, she drew backwards and the clay overtook the boy's mouth again. He seemed to be screaming beneath it. Terrified, Dahlia stumbled backwards. As she did, the clay wrapped the boy up. It engulfed him wholly. 
Dahlia tripped and fell, hurting her ankle as she did so. She struggled to stand and watched, horrified, as the boy writhed and twisted. Then he stopped fighting. His shape changed. He became curvy, feminine. His chest expanded to produce two pert breasts and a narrow waist. His face vanished entirely. It was smooth and flat. His hair had vanished into the clay mass and became longer, more feminine. Now reformed, the clay girl stood and glared at her with eyeless rage. Did we read three or f which one did we read? Yeah, that was three. So we're reading four now. Dalian blimped from the room. The clay girl followed her on legs made of a great mass of flowing clay. The clay girl was not fast, but her injured ankle, Dalia could not run. She struggled and cursed, and then she saw them. There were more, many more. At the end of the hallway stood another clay girl, and behind her two more. She was surrounded, and the clay girls were close. Dahlia ducked into a side room and slammed the door shut. The clay girls reached the door and merely stood in front of it, their shadows cast by the candles faintly visible in the cracks beneath the door. Dahlia's chest had tightened. She had almost fainted, but a surge of adrenaline kept her upright. She limped to the window, scratching at it and trying to open it. She could not grip the edges. It was then that she realized that the window had been sealed to his frame. It could not, could not be opened. Dahlia looked for something to throw through the window, something heavy she could use to break it. She found a discarded fire poker and prepared to throw it when she felt a tickling sensation. She screamed. The fire poker was covered in clay. The clay snaked over her body. She dropped the poker only for it to splatter on the floor. It had looked solid, but in fact it had been made of clay. As it hit the floor, it spread and grew in size. Then a head emerged from the mass, and a body formed after it. Somehow the clay girl had disguised herself as the fire poker. Dahlia recoiled in horror as the girl slid towards her. The tickling moved up her arm. She could soon be covered in clay. The faceless clay girl stood over her now, and drops of clay fell from her onto Dahlia. Dahlia tried to scream again, but nothing came out. Soon she was engulfed in the clay. It covered her in soft, cool, tickling goo. It felt even slightly pleasurable, except she could not breathe. She feared she would faint, but then she began to breathe easily somehow. She felt her sight return. No longer was she covered in the clay. She was the clay. She quickly felt at her face only to feel the smooth, unbroken clay. She had no mouth, no eyes, but she could still see somehow. She grasped at the clay but could not pull it off. She pushed and tugged. It was then that she realized that there was no Dahlia beneath the clay. The clay was Dahlia. Dahlia was the clay. Dahlia stood on her formless legs. A thought entered her head. She needed to write this down, write down what had happened to her. She opened the door. Her fellow clay girls parted and let her pass. There was a typewriter near the entrance. She put a piece of paper in and began writing. Then, when the whole story was on the page, Dahlia slid backwards and looked at her work. She had done what she had to do. Dahlia would have smiled, but she had no face. She was not a person. She was clay forever. Dahlia went into the manor. She did not know why she did what she did anymore. She simply did. She found a place. She found an object. She became that object and lay in wait. The end. Okay, I, I, um, I love this stuff. <laughs> oh, okay. Hmm. I've played story, uh, games like this, and this is actually toned down a lot. I, I don't stream games like this when I do play them, but um, they are, um, this one was part of the bundle, so. 
Okay. Um. Let's go here. Spade. Okay, where is Jesse? It's she seems really far away. A wind card. Let's take the wind card. It's the balcony, I think. Oh, it's upstairs, so it's not the backyard. Um, okay, so what door is left? This one? Okay, there's something here? No. Nothing here. Uh, did we get all the... Everything else is locked, yeah. It's a balcony. Um... I think we covered everything on this floor. We should, um... Something must be happening downstairs now. Nope, nothing is happening downstairs. Let's go have a combat. Huh. You can see Edith here. The doll smiles at you and approaches. Hello guest, will you be staying with us long? Not likely, just what are you exactly? Why, I'm a doll, silly. Plastic skin, ball joints, you've never seen one? Not as big as you and certainly not walking around. You're funny. Wanna play? Marbles, checkers, maybe tic-tac-toe? I don't wanna play, I'm trying to find my way home. You don't wanna play? Don't be ridiculous. Stay with us, it'll be fun. No, you s stayed firmly. Well then, maybe a new game. How about tag? Come here. Without a drip of insincerity, the doll comes for you. Defend yourself. Okay. Uh, we got two potions. We got the ace card. And off. Okay. Uh, can we do... How does the off card work? Uh, what about grinding off? Grinding batter of thundering? Huh. Burning, torching, freezing. Um... Burning and torching blow. Whoa, okay. Total damage nine. Oh, is this like when my turn ends? Okay. Yeah. There we go. That was an easy fight. Uh, a table leg. Is it better than my... Uh, physical damage by one provides an extra shield when defending. Okay. I mean, I can take it with me. But I don't have to equip it. This room has a mop and a bucket as well as some brooms. Someone was partway through cleaning it. Get closer. Potion, take the potion. Study of source, what looks like Egyptian hieroglyphs have been scribbled around. Okay. A uh, love letter. To Mary, I've never been good at confessing my feelings and I spent two weeks writing and rewriting this letter. So here goes. I have feelings for you, not just as a friend, but more than that. When I'm with you, Jesse made a spelling mistake when I writh you. <laughs> My stomach gets all tight and I get goosebumps. I like you. I know we've been best friends for years and I don't want to make this weird. So if you don't return my feelings, I won't mention it again. But if you find this note and you do, 
well, just well, I don't know, say talk Jesse Goatsickle so I know you read it and I want to be with me. I don't know. There are several more crossed out um, <laughs> words, apparently previous attempts by Jesse to write the same letter. Can we do talk Jesse Goatsickle? Or should we do that like when I see her? Okay. I could take the note. So she was here around... Oh, I see footprints. So she's gone this way. Oh, look at this big thing. Leather gloves. Let's equip them. Yeah. Okay. Leather gloves. Um, he has one shield when combat starts. That's useful. Okay, what is this? Okay, so I think she went this way up instead of down. Ah, you can see Jesse here. Okay. Uh, best friend, Raven haired, great school, fashion sense. Okay. Let's talk. Mary, Jesse shouts, running up to you. Thank goodness. What happened? How did we get here? Where are we? Don't know, don't know, and don't know, respectively, he replied with a shrug. Been hiding from the things. Have you seen them? If you're talking about those animated puppets, then yes. What are you going to do? What if those things get us? We can outrun them, I think. Don't lose your cool. I think the main hall is a safe spot. That's where I left Lauren. Haven't heard any crying since then, so it's got to be a good spot. Follow me. Okay. Yes, we will follow you. You should escort her back to the main hall. Yeah, let's do the... Yes, talk. Jesse, goat sickle. Didn't that work? It's supposed to work. Let's look at this. Uh, talk, Jesse, goat sickle. Yeah. Oh. Talk, Jesse, goat sickle. Hey, Jesse, what if I said a silly word to you? Huh? I just made it up now. Goatsicle. <laughs> Are you serious, Mary? I found your note. You must have dropped it. I like you too, Jesse. Just thought I was the only one, so I kept it to myself. It's a bad time, right? Yeah, I can drop it. Jesse abruptly leans in and kisses you on the lips. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Was that too fast? No, no, it's totally okay. I just didn't think my first kiss was going to happen in a creepy mansion in the middle of the forest. Yeah, I guess this is a bad time to make out. But hold my hand until we get out of here. Deal. <laughs> yeah, this is gonna... <laughs> explode. Oh, okay, that's you. Look at all your friends, little one. You have so many, and they're... Disobedient, unruly, independent. Is that a problem, ma'am? Just like I, it said, just like it said, I have to go check something quickly. What's with that lady? Again, again, I thought it was sent, but it was. The great throbbing glow returns with each step. They must be stopped. What? The great throbbing glow? Pigmelly, what's wrong? Stop them, stop them, can't let them have the pieces or all ends in ash. Uh, that sounds like uh, our main mission here. Should we go after her? I think so, this place doesn't seem so safe all of a sudden, can't quite place it. I want to go home. Follow me. In her haste, Pygmalee seems to have dropped some things that look important. Let's grab them all. Heart key. Okay, so we can open the heart doors now. This game is fantastic. Um, journal page and map piece. Look at the map piece. Oh, we can overlay it. God damn. Um, look at this. A journal page. Should pick it up to okay, take a closer look. Okay, I'll right, take it. Uh, I pick up the journal page. You decide to keep them all in one place. The journal will store all the pages you find. Page one is available. Okay, so it's like you read the journal, you can see it. 
Okay. Read journal one. My name is Sarah Leanne. I'm writing this in November of the year 1957. I don't know what day it is. I don't know if it's even still November as I write this. It has been so many days that I lost track. I'm writing this because I realize that I'm forgetting things the longer I am here. I realized yesterday that I could no longer remember going to primary school. I can remember that I went there, but I cannot remember what I did there, if I did anything. I cannot remember the people I went with, the teachers who taught me, or what I did before and after. It is all gone. I fear that as, as I stay here longer, I will lose more, so I'm writing what I have here while I can. I bet that journal page refers to the main... to Pygmily. Hmm. Okay, so I have two people going with me. That's good. Uh, let's, uh... It's good. Let's save here. Uh, save... two? Or save zero, two? Yeah. So now we can open, uh, let's look at the map, uh, map, where are you? Look map, yeah. Okay, so the gardens got activated, I think. The map piece that, yeah, okay. Oh, now the hearts have all opened up. Wasn't there an enemy here? Okay, so it, it got created the shortcut. Um, you hear a distant giggle and a clacking of plastic joints somewhere in the manor. Okay, there's an um, enemy right there. Journal page. Let's take it. Page two. Okay. Oh, there's two of them. There's multiple enemies. What is this one? Uh, the hulking brute. Ah, it's this creature. We had uh, faced it before. That's 27 hit points. I think we can handle it. We have two shields already. Um, Alright, so let's do a freezing crush. Oh, freezing and freezing batter. Okay. Okay, scorching, scorching blow, or damage. We need to make longer sentences to have like more effects. We got and we got shocking, we got a tackle. Interesting. Flaming and grinding tackle. It slowed them down. Then we have a. Rock and crush, I don't know if it's gonna do enough. Um, uh. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, that should do it. Okay. Body fades out of existence, leaving only the mask hovering in place. The mask looks at you and repairs the bullet hole in it very slightly. Then it too fades out. It will be back, and next time it may not be defeated so easily. Ah, okay, it's a recurring enemy.
pick them up, please. Um, testament. The people in this place do not present much difficulty, for I am experienced in the arts of death. But they have no blood and merely reform sometime after being defeated. It is disheartening. I have been wandering here for some time. When I try to leave through the woods, I find myself back where I started. If there's a way out, I do not know where it is. I have been trying to conserve my strength, but I know I will need to sleep eventually, and that the hollow joints girls will not. I know I will succumb eventually. Okay, there's another one there. Okay, that's a diamond. That's a spade. Oh, we went through. A diamond again. I like the Metroidvania aspect of it where you... Where you have to come back and get uh, to access. Okay, so there's a chapel here. Okay. Okay, so we are. Uh, I think the chapel is here at the top. Okay. There's a library here we can get to. Do a blasting block. Okay, so erupt. Oops. Okay, well we protected ourselves quite well. Erupting. Um. And blowing. Attack. Three draws, one, two, three. Um, this game is easier than I thought it would be. Usually survival horrors are way harder. Okay, freezing guard. Three shields. Um, blowing and grinding crush. Oh, it's reloading. Okay. Uh, flaring attack. And... Boiling throw of rumbling. Whirling tackle. There. The library should be here. Oh, it's a chapel. Okay. The library should be here then? Maybe this big thing is the library. There's a card here. Fire card. Hmm. 
Well, that's different. Um, blowing and freezing batter. One, two, three. Um, uh, blow of burning. Burning blow? No. Remove that. Just do a burning blow. Oh, it has a weakness to fire. Interesting. Uh, draw some very okay, three shields. Whoa, that was a big attack. Rumbling guard and okay. A freezing strike. Do that. Um. Freezing. <laughs> yeah. Block first. Burning. There we go. Ah. Uh, oh no, I forgot about the potion. Okay, this is locked. Um, okay, these are locked. So, I think the library is on the left. Oh. Uh, okay, we have a batter again. And we have an end. So, torching... Batter. And... Torching... Oh, torching and torching, okay. Batter. Okay, fire weakness, good. All right. So, freezing bash. Water slow down. That was that's not that was something. Raptin crush. Okay, we have a. Ah, thundering. Du, 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 du. Ah, let's do a thundering blow of chilling. Ah, free draws. Awesome. Thundering. Oh. Uh, got free draws. Free draws. Uh, oh, we could do an erupting protect. Oop. Far too hard to move. Um... Okay, so what happens now? Because we have, we still have actions. We could 
talk to people. Wait, there's three people here? No, no, no. This, there's Jesse, Laura, and Lauren. There's three people. Your kid brother Lauren's feel. Uh, la, la, la. Um. Okay. Who's Laura? Oh, the the doll is Laura. Okay, interesting. Um. I do have potions, but what happens now is the question. A big mug of hot chocolate. Okay. Um. You can. Uh, can you move though? Doll approaches you without hesitation, injects a small needle into your neck. You try to push yourself away. You can't catch your breath no matter how hard you breathe. Jesse and Lauren pale in horror as the doll girl injects you. Jesse attempts to intervene, but the doll pushes her away. Let out a gasp. Run. Jesse is about to protest when she sees the changes overtaking you. With a pained expression, she grabs Lauren and spirits, spirits him into the manor. She calls back promises to save you. Now you're alone with the doll. The doll smiles emptily and stands you up. She supports you as you feel the fluid in the needle flow into your body. She smiles at you and withdraws the needle. Your legs seem to have recovered enough to stand on your own, but you catch sight of your wrist and you struggle to balance. It seems to have become rigid, pale white, and completely numb. You realize that you can feel the same lack of sensation all over your body now. It's spreading up your legs. Losing feeling wherever the plastic goes, you have only a few seconds before it takes over your whole body, but you're oddly complacent. As the plastic spreads, an odd euphoria takes you. This is wonderful. You love it. You want it. An involuntary giggle escapes your mouth. Very soon, you can feel most of your body. You can't feel most of your body. Thoughts of running away are soon replaced by curiosity. You wonder what will happen when you're completely changed. It excites you. Your hair soon begins to fall out. You barely notice. It feels so good, so right, that you would, wouldn't protest even if you could. The doll stands nearby, smiling emptily. She begins tugging at your clothes, stripping you. You can't resist and wouldn't anyway. You want to help her, desperately, but are almost entirely numb. You begin to smile with the same empty expression as she does. The doll helps you into a sitting position, holding you gently until your body balances. And your hair completely falls out and you feel your head becoming smooth. You want to smile but your mouth has gone numb like the rest of your body. You look forward to the coming numbness. The, the less you feel, the more complete you are. Now your thoughts are fading. The numbness has re reached your mind and you will be completed soon. The euphoria begins to subside and you know that you that would excite you if you could feel excitement anymore. The last of your body dollifies as you watch behind unmoving, unblinking eyes. As your head transforms, all motivation and concern leave you. Your final thought is hoping your new creator will make you pretty. You want to be a good doll and soon you want nothing. Your thoughts become empty, your mind is as empty as your smooth plastic body. You are a featureless blank slate waiting to be molded into some other shape. Able to see but not able to think, you gaze into infinity as an unfinished puppet. Can you still move? Yes, you can. Laura carries you to Green Path E. Ah. Oh. No, okay. It, it's moving in a... You can't decide where to go. Ah, a small key. Can you take it? Nope. Carries you to... Okay, so there's a specific place we're going. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Ah. 
Upon seeing you, Pygmalee ga uh, gains a wicked grin and saunters over. You're such a naughty little one, staying out past your bedtime, listening to silly music. Such was my youth as well. Pygmalee picks up your limp form and places you in a chair, sitting opposite a full-length mirror. You can see a reflection in it as Pygmalee fawns over you. She picks up a nearby bag full of cosmetics and begins sorting through them. If, you go, if you're going to cause a ruckus, best to look the part. Uh, Laura goes to the south. Okay, then what happens? Um, Pygmalee begins digging piercings into your plastic. You dimly feel the prick and stick off a piece of metal. There and there. Somehow sticking bits of metal into oneself is considered taboo and wrong. Feh. She applies some stars and glitter along with some light makeup. She grins at her work. You remain motionless and empty. Now this is going to be interesting. Well, I never met a challenge I could not mas master. Wait here, she says and disappears behind you amongst the clothes rack. She laughs, emerging. Car she carries a wig but promptly tears it in half before fitting it onto your head. The hair seems to come alive briefly as it attaches itself to your scalp, becoming your hair. Part of it is missing, but that is exactly as your creator willed. Perhaps my finest work, my sweet. I know you'll love it, your creator says. She is right, you do. Um, now perhaps some long nails and I've just the thing. She disappears again. You hear her searching through the rack and soon some ripping sounds. For a few moments you had felt something, but as she left you that something disappeared. You can no longer recall what that something was. You cannot recall anything. You are empty. Your creator promptly slips you some heavy rubber boots on your feet and places a tattered skirt and shirt on you. This is a kind of dress up game that's more interesting, I think. A spider theme for a rough independent dolly, yes, and long nails to indicate you're wild and untamed, right my suit? She is right, but she would never admit it, you're too proud to, you're not the sort to just let someone else tell you how to live. No one, of course, except for your creator. To her, you are totally devoted. Let's give you something different for eyes. Your creator produces a set of paints and paintbrushes. She thinks for a few seconds before mixing. Yes, bright yellow, or oh, that will look splendid. The paint is mixed and she begins brushing it across your eyes. Your sight goes black, black as your heart. A glorious yellow eyes for a hard-nosed punk, yes. Your vision suddenly clears and is sharper than ever. You see the beaming face of your creator. You almost want to stand up and thank her, but you're too proud and rebellious to do that, so you just sit unmoving and unthinking. Your mind is still empty. Let's fix that and make you a real dolly, shall we? The creator places her hand on your head and you feel your thoughts begin to stir. You're in the alley of some great big city. Steam and smoke drift listlessly overhead. It's a cold day, but you don't share. You don't care about anything. Your friends huddle around you, playing dice and telling lewd jokes. You smirk as one of the boys gives you a wink. He stands before you and you embrace. You make out for a few minutes without caring who sees you in a public place. Nobody matters. Nothing matters. Now you're bored of him, so you push him away. He doesn't care. As you push him, his legs turn to plastic and his knees become ball joints. He crumpled to the ground, inert. A few seconds later, your new, new doll sister rises. Holding hands, you go to your friend still playing dice. They don't notice as their ha hair falls out to be replaced with smooth plastic. Soon your new sisters and are giggling and playing. You smirk again. You see two constables coming down the alley towards you. Your sisters stand as one with you. They get closer. You swarm around them, toying and taunting. One of your sisters gets behind them and knocks one over. The constable becomes plastic before she hits the ground. She stands and grabs the other constable. You shove, it, shove a lit cigarette into the constable's mouth, forcing a deep drag. When the smoke comes back out, your new doll sister smiles at you. Everyone will know the simple pleasures of chance and reckless love. Nobody will tell you and your sisters how to live or what to do. Nobody but your creator. You feel your joints springing to life. A small smile etches itself onto your face. 
Stand up, my little doll, and let your creator look at you. You obey instantly standing up and presenting yourself for the creator to look over. She smiles. Very good. You are now ready. You are ready now, so go play wherever you want, my little dolly. You smile and curtsy at your creator as a newly crafted doll. Okay, so we can still play. <laughs> okay, can we take them? There's the chapel key. That's what we needed. You pick up the map piece, use the map. Okay. You take the chapel key. Let's look at the map. Okay. So the chapel is active now. So even after you lose, you can still play. It's not like, uh, you know. <laughs> Ah, it's another journal page. Page 12. Wow, this is probably the last part. Let's let's read the page 12. Uh, read journal 12. Oh, she, you can't read. Reading, how silly. You only read and write when your creator wants you to. Okay. Uh, enchanted rapier. Wow. That's... Wow, that's gonna be a powerful weapon. Testament. I don't know if you can read that. No. You can take a potion. Can you take a potion? Can you drink a potion? No. Oh, but it would have. You could have drank, drank it if you didn't have maximum health. Uh. There's another potion here. Um, I want to see what happens if you go back to the map, the main area again. On this, where was the? Um. Oh, it was in the. No, no. Ah, there you go. That's a balcony. No, there was a there's a set of stairs here somewhere. Just don't remember where. Probably do you see it? There we go. Now we're back in the garden. Ah, uh, the small key. Take the small key. Uh, this way. Uh, huh. The fog grows thick around you here. It hugs tightly. This is unnatural. Interesting. Oh, okay. It's really, really foggy. That was another doll. Hmm. That's another doll. There's another... There's a card here. Can you still use the cards? Death card? Huh. Interesting. I, I wonder what those spells would have done. Yeah. Yeah. Why is that one coming with me? This may... No, I don't think you can talk to them. Okay. Where are we at? Let's look at the map. It doesn't show us where we are. Okay. 
Um, maybe we can zoom out then. Yeah, there we go. Uh, this is the... Yeah, so this is like the mansion. We go down here, we can go to the mansion. That's another doll. Oh, you can see Lauren here. Huh, so you can have conversations. And... But, like, you can also, like, there's a play option, which makes you fight. Oh, you can also surrender. Interesting. You are quite upset at this. A good dolly does not let her creator down, and your creator desires you to have more sisters. You must track the boy down. You smile, you will find the boy. He must be somewhere in the manor. Okay, interesting. So there are basically two games you can play here. <laughs> um, yeah, I think I'm gonna stop now since I've like showcased much of this. There's a lot of... What is this? Why is this different? How many endings can you get? Oh, look at that. That's how many endings you can have. I didn't unlock any of them. But... Uh, oh, we can save? Anywhere? Interesting. Alright, so how do I quit? Oh, there we go. Okay, so that was String Tyrant, and it's five US dollars. Um, pretty interesting. A strange deck of playing cards, a stranger appearing from sudden storm, the sheltering doorway of a lonely manor, unliving dolls smiling emptily as they chase you down. Um, String Tyrant is a survival horror game where you must look, think, hide, and if necessary, fight your way out of a mysterious mansion filled with monsters and traps. If you're defeated by a monster or fall for a trap, you'll be ensnared by the manor's residents and join them to hunt your former friends. At least you'll be a pretty doll. The game has an active card-based combat system where you build combos using the magical cards. You can hear nearby enemies through doors and walls, can open and close doors to try to break line of sight, and must contend with traps that will tax your wits. A free de demo is provided. And yeah, that's it. I think they made the engine that they based this game on, so that's pretty cool. Yeah, it's very creative. Like, um, it is similar to other adventure games, but it's like it took the um, some elements from the rapid adventure game system and some elements from RPG Maker and they combine into one engine. It's pretty cool. Yeah. All right. So let's um, let's end this one here. Let's zoom out a bit. And that was our. That was uh, our game number 608. So if you want to check out this game, it's at... Um, it's at starlightstudios.h.io. It's also on Steam, I believe. But you can check out details at the website here in chat. 